music. The sweet assembly of sounds the ancient Greeks called the gift of the gods. It's a vital part of cultures around the world. It could be a rewarding part of any day. Some people of extraordinary talent have even risen to fame and fortune as what is known as musicians. You have chosen to learn how to make music yourself with this video. We're going to teach you how to play the cowbell. The cowbell is a rewarding instrument to master. This wonderful percussive instrument has many intricacies, but you'll find it's easy to learn. The first thing to learn is the proper way to hold the cowbell. To start with, here are two examples of how not to hold the cowbell. Hold your hand as shown here. Now make a claw with your hand like so. Think of an eagle's claw. That's it. Now simply insert the shallow end of the cowbell into position and squeeze. Give a few rough taps to make sure the cowbell is secure. Are you still holding the cowbell? You've done it! You can now properly hold a cowbell. But there are a number of positions you can play the cowbell. This is called the seated position. It's popular because it provides adequate spinal support for the cowbell player. Some players prefer standing position. Prone position is a somewhat unorthodox <laughs> position by German. This position, which is very popular these days, is known as Bruce Dickinson's position. Find a position that's most comfortable for you and we'll begin playing. First, you must find due north with a compass. Modern science has proven that a cowbell sounds its best when facing due north. If you're facing another direction, you may notice a significant drop-off in quality of the cowbell sound. A drumstick, usually made of wood, is used to strike the cowbell. But you can explore other items to strike a cowbell. <laughs> We, however, recommend starting with a normal drumstick. Let's begin playing. We'll start out with a very recognizable piece of music. Note where the player chooses to add the cowbell. There. See how riveting the cowbell can be? It adds that little extra bit of magic to any music. Let's try a different melody. This time, modern music. Here is the song without the presence of cowbell. <laughs> Now, with the cowbell, be sure to play along at home. And that's enough for that. <laughs> All right. Now you're on your way to playing the cowbell. Remember, practice makes perfect. It said you can learn a lot about someone by walking a mile in his shoes. The same is true for a cowbell, except a cowbell has no shoes or feet. So simply learn by walking a mile and playing your cowbell. Soon you'll have found that you too can master the cowbell. <coughs> Once you master it, you'll find you want to hear the cowbell more and more. Have you got drumsticks? So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> steel cowbell. I know steel acquired cowbell. All right, Mike. Or okay. Kick us off. Okay, good morning everyone, probably nearly afternoon now after setting all that stuff up. <coughs> so, thanks very much for coming. We are the, the beer farmers. The beer farmers. Um, what are the beer farmers? Well, the beer farmers started in August. We've all known each other for quite a while, whether we've met on the conference circuit or just met through Twitter. Um, and we felt at the back of summer that there was quite a lot of uh, ill will possibly floating around on the on the web around InfoSec. People getting a bit upset, um, a lot of fallouts and a lot of angst and trouble. So we thought, why don't we come together and create something that might bring a bit of fun into the whole thing? And that's where the beer farmers come from, and that's what we're all about. So we're not here to take ourselves too seriously. We have got some serious stuff to talk to you about today. Um, but the beer farmers as a group, we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different countries. Pretty cool. Well, yeah. No, no, no. You're, you're English. I'm not. <laughs> and we're not a band. And we're not a band. <laughs> so I hope nobody's in the room from the place that got in touch with me a couple of weeks ago, but we were asked to play at the after party of a conference <laughs> <laughs> later in the year. I think they might be disappointed. In uh, yeah, yeah, so I had to gently let them <laughs> tell them the truth, but there you go. So <clears throat> anybody under the age of 18 in the room? 
No. Good. That's all. Um, we've put together a parental advisory in uh, languages based around big threat actors here. So I hope that's appreciated for anybody that's uh, not English speaking naturally. Uh, there'll be some swearing because we brought Andy. That's what I fucking do. <laughs> there you go. So don't be offended, hopefully. It's more. Well, no, I'm going to offend you. Like, it's your choice to be offended or not. That's <laughs> good point. Um, contentious. <laughs> I mean, you make cowbell break We'll try and keep any foul language and stuff within context of the other talk. Try. <laughs> so I'm Mike, AppSec Bloke on Twitter. Um, Ian? Yeah, try a bit. Please follow. <laughs> John? Follow from Belgium this morning. Sean here? Hi. And I'm Jeff Fish. Everyone knows me. I hack shit at this one. You can see us on Twitter, we're all busy on there, we're all shit posting regularly, and that's our beer fire on this handle there, so come find us. Okay. That's gonna loop forever. <laughs> if you don't like and we're gonna get sued a lot. <laughs> Technology. Oh, sticky keys. There you go. Oh, no, it's still good. Halo is delivered. Just unplug it. Yep. There we go. That worked. No, it's still good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hear the sound. Turn it up on that. So what? You need to do your pen testing methodology again? There we go. Right. Okay. So... We've got some stuff to give away. We've got some t-shirts. We've got some cowbells, uh, obviously. We've got some drumsticks that we've had specially laser etched with our motto in there as well. So we've got it all in the bags so We've got down stickers here. over here. My, um, yep. my, my colleagues... Hold that. Quite heavy. My colleagues were supposed to set that up, but they're clearly shit. Um, <laughs> so we're going to ask you a couple of quiz questions and then if you get the answer or the first to get the answer correct can pick what they want from the swag bag uh, the first question is who's this guy? Oh, you, you there yeah and who said Telly Savalas first? ok Colette Andy Colette Andy what would you like? you like a drumstick I Give knew they were Collect what we're talking about. <laughs> and, and a new eye for the gentleman. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Yes. Stickers, Stickers and a drumstick. Yeah. I can never be a drummer like that. <laughs> Making <laughs> IT people do anything sports related is usually ends badly. <laughs> yes. Very true. Yes. You, know, um, you lose an eye, a leg, an arm. And everyone gets stickers, right? So yeah. We've got... Beer Farmer stickers, and we've got... We'll get you Hav- afterwards. If we're we've got Havai Bin Pwn stickers as well, because you can do that. Troy Hunt doesn't mind. Okay, so that's Kojak, and he had a famous catchphrase, which was, who loves you, baby? So the catchphrase here is, who takes your security seriously, baby? Well, let's find out. Okay. So Yahoo um, famously took everybody's security seriously when they lost a considerable amount of data, going back to 2012, at least on record. So you've got some serious amounts of data there, up to 500 million records in that 2014 breach. The actual number of records that it's reckoned that are out there of Yahoo's is 1.5 billion. That's a lot of records. Um, a bit of the background of that, and Ian can chip in if, if he'd like to do, is um, <coughs> the Russians wanted access to some high-value targets. Right, so they hired a Canadian. <laughs> uh, an Armenian gentleman, down on his luck, uh, originally from Montreal. I didn't know him personally, so please don't ask um, but um, here's the really funny thing. He was never charged in Canada uh, for this crime. He was scooped up by our national police force, known as the Mounties. <laughs> and uh, they arrive on horse. And- uh, yeah, and then he was uh, basically thrown across the border to the Americans. Um, now, the really interesting thing about this is if you read the indictment of, of this, he basically got about a year and a half in prison. And why do you think that was? Because he ratted out the uh, FSB guys that had originally hired him to do the Yahoo hack. And the reason they went after Yahoo specifically is many senior members of the U.S. government, uh, as it turns out, had Yahoo accounts. And uh, some folks like uh, Mr. Cheney um, were busy um, moving classified documents back and forth. And do you all remember a story about Protea, uh, Proteus, the, uh, ge- the American general that uh, basically came down in flames? Yeah, he was sending classified documents from his Yahoo account to a reporter. And that's kind of the genesis of, of this breach. <coughs> Absolutely right. 
Okay. <laughs> I lifted that just the other day from Facebook's uh, security pages. So they have top-rate security measures. We could scri- uh, scribble that out and put bank quality, bank grade, oh, military, military grade, military grade military. you name it. <clears throat> but it's top-rate stuff in place to protect you and your data when you use Facebook. I think a lot of people in this room will probably fucking disagree with that. So let's have a look. There is looking a little bit more upset. That's inside front of Congress, not really answering any questions. There's a really horrible meme of him doing the rounds with him smirking. Look it up. It's horrible. You don't want to show your kids it. Um, but there you go. There's a little excerpt of it there. Let's look at it. Six million <laughs> records in 2013. Six million to me, it's a drop in the ocean, right? Really small number. <clears throat> 10% of the UK population. Okay. 50 million. 29 million, six and a half million. So the 50 million was in relation to the Cambridge Analytica business. So we're all aware of the, all that going on. So that's manipulating people for political purposes, um, allowing apps to mine data out of users, sharing information with third parties, company burned as a consequence of that. The ICO, anybody remember them with their FBI coats on, breaking into the, uh, the headquarters of Cambridge Analytica and doing fuck all, yeah? <laughs> So we're not sure what the outcome of that is, but... Wasn't that a week later? Uh, yeah, it was, after all of the stuff had been set on fire in the field. Um, so actually, they're not very good at taking your security seriously at all. They're certainly not good at keeping your data. They're not good at managing tokens when you allow an app to connect to their service. That's where the 29 million records got leaked through uh, auth tokens. <coughs> and here's another thing. Seemingly, they're quite cool with hate speech. Yeah, they say they're not. They say they're doing everything in their power to deal with hate speech, but that's just rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. They appear, based on what we know, to be talking of politically subversive things. So they will allow messages, uh, political messages to be posted on their thing. They will allow analysis and and, uh, AI to handle likes and comments (coughs) and work out what people's political persuasions are and then move that information to people that might value it. They're terrible at getting rid of bad people. Okay, you, you see it. I mean, there was a thing doing around on Twitter, some screenshots of Facebook recently of some real, real horrible stuff going on. Uh, people getting attacked, um, <clears throat> and clearly their, their their intrinsic value as a company is your data. Okay, that's where they made their money. Well, if the platform is free, you are the product. Absolutely right. <clears throat> Boom. Okay, I'm going down. Sounds on. Sounds on. We've got a we've got a really good video. Oh, sounds, yep. We're going to make a right ass of this one, I guess. <laughs> just just just, uh, just before it happens, I didn't dub this before everyone goes. You're Scottish. Oh, just just. Uh, I mean, I mean. Yeah. It's still playing the front. <laughs> Why is that not stopping? <laughs> <laughs> It's not. <laughs> oh, well, you'll get a next step study. I, I, I feel like the deal with this now. Let's deal with me right now. I feel like the pen test right partners now. just pen tested your laptop. That's what I think is going on. My malware's working, guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Are we ready? So um, and, and I just started Facebook and I just wanted to sell shoes and dresses and stuff and get some likes put up some videos of wee cats and then I all got put it on and then before I knew it um, Trump was president <laughs> and Brexit happened and turns out folk was using all my addresses and see to be honest I'd be happy selling three pairs of socks down the bar three for a pound three for a pound or this has just got a bit of pure with it on I like lights I like cats I like videos of wee monkeys holding accordions and you know I don't know why I'm getting my boss boot out of this but they believe in my fault and I, I never even meant anything to go wrong. And before I knew it, Trump was president. I never knew people were stealing all the intelligence and all the addresses. None of me. I was just doing my bit. I just, I just like writing code and that and algorithms and stuff. I think it is your fault, son. At the end of the day, you've kept all people's information and you've given it to everybody and now we've got that bammy bastard in the White House. So I think it might just be your fault. So stop trying to get out of it, you wee ball bag. <laughs> that is so good. It's a hundred percent good. No, that's again. <laughs> that was Andy. That, that was wasn't me. Andy. That wasn't me dubbing over. <laughs> Andy brought that to the yes to the attention to the table. So Twitter, another giant. Uh, we spend a lot of time on there. You probably noticed. You probably muted us. Um, <laughs> if you haven't, you should. Uh, a paltry 250,000 records in 2013 
And then uh, 330 million last year. 330 million records. And again, you know, they're pretty cool with bad people being in their environment. Yeah, much like everybody else has discussed. It's quite hard being on Twitter at times. I find, I don't know if anybody else agrees with it. <clears throat> I find myself, I think I'm quite a, a middling kind of guy. And I, I can say things from both sides, but I really struggle. And more recently, I'm finding it even more difficult to enjoy being on Twitter. I'm not yet rage quitting, <clears throat> but I'm finding it quite difficult. I've seen a few nods ahead, and generally people feel the same same kind of way. I just yeah. want to add on this one. So we've lost a few people in the community, uh, information security as a result of toxic social media. Um, you know, there is uh, some great examples. MZ Bat, who has contributed to the community in crazy amounts of ways, has uh, departed Twitter along with uh, Dave Kennedy from Trusted Sec. So unfortunately, um, it's become quite a toxic media. And I really recommend that um, you make sure that you're comfortable with um, that kind of toxicity. If you're going to try and put forward uh, an opinion that may not be shared by the echo chamber of InfoSec, okay? Be prepared for it. And don't let it get you down. Because you're a valuable member of the community and being forced out is really disgusting. And I will try and go to the bat for you if something like that is going down, <coughs> as with the beer farmers. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> so we think we've demonstrated there that we have a problem. Large organizations seem to have a problem. And of course, the larger the organization's data set, the bigger the problem becomes. So I, I found this on Google that they reckon that there are at least three breach records for every human on the planet. Okay. I think it's considerably more than that. I think that's probably just the data we see. So So I just also want to add when when companies say we take your privacy seriously, we take your security seriously. Personally as a user, I'm not interested in words, I'm interested in action. Companies need to stop using buzzwords and, and buzz phrases. And start doing things, not saying things. Yeah, yeah, I'm with it. But it isn't just the big boys um, in social media that are a problem. <laughs> That's <laughs> deliberate. So, just before, what, November time? Yeah. Thereabouts. So, BT fell for why would class as a slightly sophisticated. Well, pressure, it's not BT. BA. Yeah. BA. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, sorry, BT. <laughs> <laughs> something, something I, I work in Telco, yeah. so yeah. easy mistake to make. Um, British Airways <laughs> suffered a supply chain poisoning problem, which I would consider to at the time have been a reasonably sophisticated attack. It was set up. Um, the attackers set up a, a remote server in Romania. They bought a domain that looked a bit British Airways ish. Uh, they even got a, a, a Let's Encrypt cert or something along those lines. They set it up properly. And then MageCart got dropped into some JavaScript and away the data went at the point of payment. <clears throat> so the VA customer was online, entering the car details, clicked <laughs> submit, and on the up of the mouse, it sent the data off to this server in Romania at the same time. Okay, so that's, that's the tech of what happened there. 380,000 stolen payment cards. So that's kind of a, a big deal, certainly if you're a VA customer. It's also the first big UK post-GDPR breach because it's personal data. But also, it's a PCI DSS concern because it's card payment data. Now, I know that my friend Sean here has got a real beef about the GDPR. He thinks it's toothless. I worked in a big project last year to bring it into my company to get us to a level of compliance. I, yeah, if I may uh, say course, something, yeah. uh, I think it depends on the country. If, it, if we you should. Should. There's a room full of people here. Yeah. 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 Uh, if, you, if you sit... Stand you sit on it. Uh, and <laughs> like in Belgium, our uh, authority is just like, you know, we're not doing very well. They are still recruit, recruiting and, and so on. So I'm not really confident if we get a data breach that this will be handled very well, let's say. But honestly, I think they, this and yeah, the other day, <laughs> there was also uh, a case with Google in the news where they were fined for, uh, was I think, 57 million. And then I think. We're talking, I mean, that, that are for Google, it's 57 million, it's peanuts. But then again, it's, it's an example. We need more of these <coughs> cases and more of these examples. Yeah. And then uh, I think companies hopefully will change their behavior. Hopefully the GDPR will be 
something positive and not within two or three years, then we think, okay, that was GDPR two or three years ago, and yeah, what's what's about it now? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. that's what I hope at least uh, it will be effective. I think you can agree with that. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's right, for so early about days. So about action, yeah. not words, then exactly. the reaction will be how these companies get dealt with. And 50, 44 million UK pounds was the Google, France Google yeah. plan, isn't it? So I, I think, yeah, it's a drop of the ocean to Google, but it's going to upset a few shareholders, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We've got two or three of those happening a year. It's also setting the precedent. So. I don't think there's been any fine anywhere near that. Certainly in terms of the UK ICO, I think the maximum was about 500,000. Yeah. So now it's like, obviously, what? My mass is bad. But, um, <laughs> how many times? How many times? <laughs> if you talk theoretically, um, talk talk got a, uh, come on, let me in a minute. Talk talk got a 400,000 pound GDPR fine, uh, data protection fine from the ICO. Uh, potentially it could have been 72 million. Because at the time, 2015, when that breach occurred, their annual global revenue was 1.8 billion. That was quite a 72 million pounds. Okay. So we're going to have to wait and see for this one. A bit of a mess. So who stayed at Marriott? <laughs> <laughs> Hope you practice good offset, dude. <laughs> yeah, hotel chains um, are, you know, arguably almost as vulnerable as hospitals uh, in terms of data breach. The problem that we have in this particular case, and this one is a really difficult one, is passport data, okay? The passport data issue is really bizarre to me in that we're, we're instituting like mandatory encryption in transit and at rest for PCI ESS, but your actual government identity document isn't prescribed by law to be encrypted anywhere. And that, to me, is completely mental because it's easy to replace a credit card number, okay? And the, and the impact of that event is, you know, somewhat minimal in that usually you're going to get your money refunded back to you. But with the passport, this is a government identity document. If you ever read a passport on the inside, you don't own your passport. The government owns the passport. So the easy fix and the thing that makes me the most angry about this one is it's easy for a government to say, thou shall encrypt with a robust encryption algorithm any government document that you collect, period. Full stop. This one really gets me fired up. Yep. <coughs> you can agree with that at all? No? Okay. I'm trying to control it. <laughs> Took the tablets earlier. Just give me close to that cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was a bit gutted the other day because... Um, Marriott downplayed the number of records from 500 million just to 383 million. I was a little bit disappointed. Um, but here it appears. Uh, anybody familiar with this website? Show of hands. Information is beautiful. So this is a really impactful graphic that I would urge you to take back to your organizations if you want to show them about the scale of data breaches. It works really well when you start to recognize companies that you have dealings with in here, of which we all, everyone who is in this room, will be in here somewhere. That's just a little infographic that's quite quite useful. Um, the problem does seem unimaginable. Every week or every other day, if there's a problem, I get this worry that we become a little bit desensitized to it if it's not in the hundreds of millions of records. It's just a few records. It's 10 records if that's like ch uh, child um, care yeah. data. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's serious stuff. Okay. Doesn't matter how many records it is. That's individual. Right, <laughs> onto the meat of it. What, so what makes things worse? Well, I'm yet to see more than a handful of good reactions and good responses to data breaches. You do see them, um, but they're quite rare. We're going to talk through an example. So who can name the lady in there? Dido Heidi. Correct. What would you like? Oh, it's cash, right? Okay. Yes. Oh, you're not losing an item. Pass it out of it. Oh, here they are. So here's a wonderful example. So in 2015, Talk Talk was hacked. Um, everybody should be uh, should remember it. Uh, unfortunately, they they put the CEO, the then CEO, uh, Baroness Dido Harding. She wasn't a Baroness at the time. She is now <laughs> on the TV on all the major news outlets with very limited understanding of what what was going on, because it was an ongoing incident at the time, 
Um, and because of that, she couldn't tell you what the hell was happening. And that was quite embarrassing. So this is what happened. First of all, they hadn't been hacked. It was put down as a, a technical issue. And then she was forced to admit, because the security industry caught up really, really quickly, right? Because we're pretty quick. We've been hacked. We're also all dead. Jump on. Well, you've been hacked. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Pylons? Yeah. Pylons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pylon. We've got a section on don't be a dick later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've been hacked. It was Russia-based Islamic jihadists. <laughs> Where the hell did she get that from? A BBC report. Who in the marketing department said, right, go on TV and tell them <laughs> this? It's not scary. It's deflection. It's super scary. Yeah. What it is, it's deflection. They've just okay. picked scary ones. It's like, right, Twitter, that's trending, that's <coughs> doing it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's deflection. And it's to divert away from the fact that they've got a, they've got a powder keg and it's exploding indoors and they want to get people looking elsewhere and blaming other people. Yahoo did the same thing. They blamed it on anybody but the actual actor that was responsible. So was the Russian. Equifax, for example, <laughs> yeah. that one person you didn't update the server. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Um, no personal data was breached. <laughs> Great. Well, it was unique serial numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be reused in any other context. <laughs> <It was burning. laughs> yeah. Um, some personal data may have been breached. <laughs> and in the end, she had to admit, and I'm kind of making this up, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know there's a disclaimer at the bottom saying that some of this is inaccurate <laughs> she chucked herself under the bus that's what she did right she should have sat and kept quiet and put minimal information out we've got an issue we're not clear yet on what the problem is yeah. we'll keep you posted and we'll do that allowed to but the wolf media is on their ass every five seconds going where are we up to what is it yeah is. and that was her problem she was, she was at that point there that photo she had 20, uh, 27 hours into it, no sleep. She's been fed misinformation from every single department with yeah. all the talk so. so she, no one, she threw herself in the bus, I fucking know it. Anybody would think she'd lost control. You don't have a disclaimer, you can't smoke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> George Rumsey. I'm not officially here. So, so <laughs> this also goes to a good point. I mean, this is an example. We see it on Twitter where um, companies, social media reps are tweeting out any incorrect Indian government website. <laughs> in- incorrect advice. And things companies need to do is they need to make sure that they, they give those people, the CEOs, the, the spokespeople, guidance training on how to deal with situations like this. Where to say, look, I don't know, let me forward it on to a technical team to get the correct advice um, and have an appropriate response and not come up with things off the cuff that just end up making things worse. Correct. So you think the head of security should have done what she did? Yeah, yeah I, I think she spent he should mind it. So it's more to say that we, we as an industry can't articulate our own world to ourselves. I'd say, the outside world. I'd say not a security person, but anyone but her. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Because a company the size of TalkTalk with somebody so influential at the head should handle this better. Even if she went, I'm washing my hands of this, I'm paying you a lot of money, you deal with it. Yeah? It would have it could have been handled better. If they just told the press to piss off, that's what I'd have done, and I'm an analyst. Let's get our all get our story straight and then we'll go out with a package of information. But that's not what happened. Does it not form part of the response plan to have marketing of things like that? Bingo. What this guy said. Well, well, let's give him a what, price. What do you want out of the back? Price. <laughs> We've got t-shirts left. Yeah, yeah. that's why we yeah. away, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got various sizes. Yeah. 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 That's a large one. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't this only going to get worse when GDPR um, stipulates that you need 72 hours to get the ICO? Yeah. Well, not in this case, because it wouldn't. No, but that mean going forward. Hang on, uh, no. HECA, Privacy Electronic Communications Regulation, which applies to telcos, 24 hours. It's going to get even worse. It's going to yeah. be hellish. I work in this industry and we're worried well, about it. And that, and that comes to that gentleman's point behind. Don't plan for it on the day. Plan. Look, most companies, yeah. it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. We'll, we'll clip on because we're into the second half yeah. of time. So let's just quickly go through this. The truth about it, 157,000 records, including some bank data. So it didn't take long for scammers to kick in. It was a matter of a couple of days. <coughs> and they were starting to ring customers up. It was a 15-year-old kid from Northern Ireland um, who was responsible for it. So and that's him. Uh, he's, he's wearing a hoodie, so he's a hacker. And he, he ain't rushing. I think his name 
Baroness. Baroness. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeff from Russia. And there's Baroness Harding. Um, she, <laughs> that, that, that picture was taken after the, the event, and it's clearly not done any harm. She's at a polo game there with an interesting sort of nappy pin thing going on. Uh, but off she fucked. I stole that from Jenny Ratcliffe, that off she fucked. Because she used it to kill a troll, a male troll, on, the, on Twitter a while ago. And I, I licensed it from her. With <laughs> it. <laughs> but. Right, that's all the bad news out of the way. <clears throat> there are there are heroes, <laughs> there are people, and there are organisations that actually do give a shit, and they are doing things to try and take your security more seriously. So they are doing things like have robust security control. So they are doing things like disclosure. They've got bug bounty schemes. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail soon. Like right? about the disclosure policy, <coughs> I don't know if you guys know, but for instance, Tesla, if you have a look, they have a really neat... Um, it's, it's really concise, it's just like half a page, and I think that's a good responsible disclosure policy. And yeah. well, the problem with that is that it's, it's, it's almost, always lacking. If you want to do responsible disclosure, you just are going to mail an info address, and then again, you, you might vote the best if you get a, a response, or you get uh, people get going mad and telling you, hey, uh, why are you hacking our, our stuff? Because you're just reporting, okay, you have this port open. Well, as I noticed that, uh, that you have a port open, like, let's say RGP port, and they're like going crazy. I mean, and this is really neat that they just find this is what you can do, and uh, this is what we expect from you, yeah, and all you can reach us. I think that's that's the way to go. Great. <coughs> okay. Can you see Gandalf there? <coughs> Ian insisted on this. It's an old picture of him. <laughs> um, but MFA, right? So, multi-factor auth. For me, anybody that cares about your data will offer it as a service. Whether they insist on it being used is a different, a different conversation. Uh, it needs to be there as an option for a consumer to use. Well, no, it needs, no needs to be properly implemented. Twitter, yeah. I mean, the, the prime example that recently, a lot of people have seen on Twitter, uh, people in the UK... If you had multi-factor web, so if you had 2FA enabled, you, you could essentially, your account could be hijacked and something could tweet your name. So a few security researchers kind of did an illegal thing, went and did it and hacked some celebrities, but it made an impact. We sort of went, we've known about this for the last eight years or something, fuck it, we're going to patch it now because it's public. But they were just going like, yes, yeah, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Like, yeah. your security is <coughs> yeah. shit. Having, having it is better than not having it, but not implementing properly, it depends what you yeah. do. Yeah. 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 False sense of security. Yeah. 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 Now, we're not here to talk about MFA <coughs> specifically, but we're here to say it's an important thing as an organization. You have a responsibility to secure the data of your customers. Um, and as a consumer, you should be considering your own personal security profile. How many other things you should talk about to prevent Well, BA was nothing to do with auth. It was to do with payment. Um, Yahoo was definitely... Just- would have been it was an, it was a broken it was an, a compromised so, account to begin with wasn't it? So they stole basically the master encryption key for <laughs> it generated all of the encryption keys for individual accounts. Um, that was not protected. That access to that was not protected by multi factor authentication. So this was kind of like a series of hacks to get at the developers who had the access that the bad guys needed to break into accounts in Yahoo. So. You know, and we saw that uh, Time Hop is a great example. They uh, twenty one thousand or twenty one million user IDs um, were stolen from them in two and a half hours uh, because they found a development uh, a laptop or a development box that didn't have multi factor authentication for their cloud services credentials enabled, and yeah. so it was like in and gone. <coughs> an example of uh, the Dropbox hack. You know, there was a Dropbox employee and he used his uh, work account on LinkedIn. LinkedIn got breached. Yeah, you know the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah. I think to answer, <laughs> your, to answer your question, probably most of it. Yeah. But, but that's multi-factor authentication for, uh, for the developers, but not uh, yeah. user base. So for, for users, the biggest attack right now is credential stuffing, right? Where... I've got a massive list, say 750 million, uh, have I been pawned? Got that massive list, I've got all of those passwords, and I just hammer all the services with those, <coughs> those, those accounts. Multi-factor authentication completely cuts that attack vector off of. Yeah. Well, if you block them after 10 attempts, then that will do as well. 
she has a problem. With that. People yeah. reuse passwords. Yeah. So a password is already in one breach. Yeah. You try it on Facebook, they're going to use in. the same credentials. Yeah. Have, having a good locket policy is it's <coughs> defense in depth. Yeah. You can exactly. have a locket policy, you can have multi-factor authentication, you can have uh, geolocation, you can have all sorts of things. But if if you're a company that doesn't do that, then you're going to fuck. Not you personally, but like, yeah. <laughs> you must be careful with locking as well. You can lock out the object of the user as well. So it has to be. But that can. protects it. Let's move on. Then SMS is insecure yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's move on because we're going to get the shepherd's cross. <coughs> okay, we've touched on responsible disclosure. So, who does that in one way or another? To show of hands, anybody? Okay, not too many people. So, it comes in different flavours. So, at my organisation, we're in the process of writing a responsible disclosure policy, which will be published on our website in an easily accessible way. We do, however, currently have a security.txt enabled following the scheme. So if a, a researcher or a hacker or whatever you want to call them arrives at a bug, they've got some way of contacting us and we will respond because we do have people looking at that mailbox that we're using. So even if it's just a case of putting a text file on your website, yeah, you can write an outbound rule so it applies to every single website that you've got in your namespace, just do it. Quick job. What you're telling the, the world is we care. So it's a very simple thing. Action. In other words, that's, that's taking the action. Yeah, absolutely right. And when somebody gets in touch, we see a lot of conjecture around this on Twitter. Do something about it. Respond. Yeah? They care enough to tell you and not just hack you. That's a really good sign. Yeah? If they told you, you've got a bit of an obligation there to do something about it. Respond quickly and fix your stuff. Even if it's a load of issue as well. Indeed, yeah. And we're going to have to move a bit quicker, but talk to the guys afterwards because there's some real examples that these guys have been involved in. Uh, uh, the see my talk at 2 o'clock actually talking about part of that. So <coughs> at 2 o'clock, we're going to talk about quite yeah. about it, especially pen testing. It might be interesting. Right, Ian, you've got a minute to talk through this. Right. So this is what happens to your brand when you um, react negatively to some security advice coming from a friendly source. Um, this is also what happens when technical people try to do their own PR, uh, such as John McAfee on the phone. <laughs> Not to mention, and, and I love him dearly, uh, Eugene Kaspersky. Uh, he should not talk publicly about the United States government uh, due to the fact that um, they're very close to sanctioning his entire company. Um, so they banned him, but the problem is, is that technical people... Uh, should not engage when a PR and marketing, as this gentleman uh, needed an approach. I put this together because this happens over and over again. Let's go to the next slide really quickly and just kind of go through. Um, okay, we didn't put that slide in. That's fine. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make here is Troy Hunt on his blog really detailed that those people that are getting beaten when a security incident happens are not technical people. They're the PR marketing people out front. And we've seen some really horrific examples of where uh, security researchers have been less than kind to non-technical individuals that are charged with that. So one of the first Troy Hunt points that he makes is if you as a person encounter a situation like that, um, be available to the PR and marketing people to put together a coherent response. Yeah. Okay. Don't leave your marketing <coughs> PR people to the wolves. So Bet Bet <coughs> is an example of this. Yeah, Bet Bet Five got slaughtered on Twitter because yeah, they yeah. had one. Yeah, he was a rogue, rogue wolf and just it just went test up. Yeah, don't use the word unhackable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never ever use unhackable. You're guaranteed a free pen test. <laughs> <laughs> and not just the one either. Just the one either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so talking of which, yeah, you know, what what proactive things can you be doing as an organisation <laughs> to try and make life better for yourself and your users? getting regular pen testing done, okay? And we're not just talking about pen testing your web apps, your servers, your network, etc. We're talking about pen testing your processes and your people and things and your building and so on and so forth. So it's more than just the technology. It's about the people involved and the processes involved. That's really a really important thing. Get independent auditing. So don't be afraid to go out and ask somebody to come and tell you how shit you are because that's valuable. That's intelligence. That's going to make you a better organization. Very important. Do regular vulnerability scanning. Um, I read somewhere that somebody was doing these annually. Fantastic. Annually. A lot of changes in a year. 
right? Um, I'll prescribe as regularly as change happens. Is is how regularly you need to do pen testing instead of uh, scanning your stuff. Shift <laughs> lift. <coughs> yeah. Get involved. Get programs up and running, and get by, and get management to to sign into these things, to sign up to bake security in, to have those adult conversations with your architects, with people that are coming up with ideas, with people in the business. Have you thought about the security implications of this? Are we collecting personal data? Are we sending it to other people? These are the things you've got to think about before you even start writing software or building a server. Really important things. Patch everything. Okay, so a lot of the breaches, certainly the Equifax breach, we know what caused that, right? It was an, uh, a non-applied Apache struts upgrade. If that had been applied, the mitigation would have been in place. That's how that wouldn't have happened. So patch everything. <coughs> and not People's just patch them, have a patch policy. Because often on pen testing, you'll see, all right, cool, we'll get a pen test, but we'll patch some things. Then it comes around to next year, if you're a week early, nothing's been patched because yeah. the mm. patch policy is bollocks. Yeah. So you want to have quite a good patch policy that you're either patching, in line with NCSC, I think it's every month they want it. Uh, but if, with bigger organizations, obviously, if you're patching production systems, you don't want to be doing that. You want to put it in dev first and then push it production. Yeah. But that's, that's just general security. <coughs> yeah, completely agree. Now, people say, oh, patching's hard. Well, of course it's hard. It's work, right? But not patching and getting your data looted and going all over the news. Poor old Dido there. Oh, pretty fucking hard too, right? Okay. We want to avoid that. Keep eyes on the supply chain so we know more about this now. This is an ever-growing problem. The supply chain, there are bad people manipulating code that you trust. Don't trust that code. Yeah, there are tools, things like content security policies, things like sub resource integrity. You can do that stuff, okay? And it will at least protect you or your clients from nasty malicious scripts running that you're not in control of. And a really important one awareness and camp- awareness campaigns and training. So we talk about uh, pen testing your people, <coughs> give you people the, the knowledge and the skills and understanding that they're going to need to help protect themselves and therefore protect your organization. It's really important stuff, okay? <coughs> Just thought we'd throw that in, uh, courtesy of Troy. We've got some Havali Perm stickers. But the thing there is, and I, I find this is really good in, in internal talks, is to just ask a member of your team or a colleague <coughs> to pop their personal email address into this web server, into this website. Uh, I practically guarantee that every single time you'll get a hit. And that's really impactful in a demo because it drives it home. Your data is out there. Okay? And if it isn't in here, that's just because Troy's not seen it. Doesn't mean it ain't out there somewhere else. If you take the mentality of the assume breach, which is what Microsoft employ, assume that your network's always been breached and then you, you work on that from out. If you if you think you're gonna be hundred percent secure or not, you're always if you're not being breached now, you're gonna be breached at some point. Yeah. It's just having the processes and training in place to kind of deal with that. So prudence response, having kind of a good patch policy and just general proactive security is the best yeah. thing to do. If you're doing an example, right. that password checker that Troy's got on his site as well. Yeah. Somebody to put their password in and see if it's been used somewhere. Yeah. And then, tell and them then how many times yeah, it's been but, used. And then tell somebody on Twitter that you did that and watch the shit storm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving my password to that Australian. <laughs> how, how secure is your password.com used to be in it? Yeah. <laughs> you can download, yeah, he's got the, the <coughs> password hashes in massive files. You can do all that. You can check it against your AD and things if you want to do it. So we're, we're now a bit pressed for time, so we're going to whiz. Okay. I just have one little Not thing. drugs. No, no. <laughs> um, EU just busted this service that would create a random seed for yeah. your Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. Um, and then surprising people that use this service got their Bitcoin wallets stolen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suckers born every minute. Absolutely madness. So, so yeah. Bug bounties. Anybody engaged in them from the corporate side? <coughs> okay. Excellent. <coughs> Anybody engaged in bug bounties from the bounty hunting side? Come on, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. If you want to hear more that's about my, this, that's come, my, come and hear my talk. My later. Segue <laughs> here. But they're not for everybody, but certainly investigate if they can do anything for you and benefit your organization. Threat exchanges, they're a thing, they exist. Um, larger organizations that operate in a similar sphere tend to like doing this. Banks like to share data with banks. Um, it's just a thought. Yeah, a lot of um, vulnerability management platforms, Alien Vault being an example, has an integrated open threat exchange where you can s- seed information into your SIM system and share some of the indicators, compromise and vulnerabilities that you find with other organizations. NCSC have also got a free one, but it's not really that active. It was really active in 2014, it's still around, but it's not really used, but it's free to see active. So. Cool. Okay, 
So yeah. we've kind of come to the conclusion that a breach is a when, not an if. And in actual fact, it's probably already happened for a lot of organisations. You just don't know yet. Yeah, the data has not appeared anywhere on the web. <clears throat> but the key thing is accept that. Get over that. Don't have the grief beforehand. Come to terms with it and then prepare. Readiness, incident response. We've talked about that a lot. Because it will happen, okay? And that's what it might feel like at the time. But the key thing is preparation. Get your incident response in order. Test it out. We did an exercise on Wednesday at our organisation, which scared the crap out of our management team. But it was worthwhile doing. It was a very important exercise. And it taught the organisation what oh, things it did oh, 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 oh. Giving it all away now. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, don't panic. We all make a mess. But it's our response that defines us. And that's the same in any, any walk of life, I think. Out of chaos comes all that. Nietzsche said that. Sure. I just said it. You said it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so these are the important things as we see them when you're dealing with something bad happening. So the truth is in there. <clears throat> Except that it's happened. Don't go blaming Russian back cyber jihadists <laughs> when you probably know in your heart of hearts it's your fault. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Get support if you need it. Don't be afraid. Cert teams exist. The NCSC is an example of a big, well-established cert team in the UK. They exist everywhere. But even if it's to go into the private sector and get somebody like the NCC group in or an organisation similar, other companies aren't available. And that's what? PCP. <laughs> <laughs> Notify. You've got to do this. It's worse if you don't. Yeah. So you've got, depending on what regulation you follow, you'll have a finite amount of time to put a package of information together and get the authorities involved. And actually, by doing that, you can invite some support in dealing with your problem at the same time. So you've got to tell them the truth about it, but you might get something useful back. <clears throat> Find out what happens. So do some analysis, root cause analysis, get a team established, understand the problem. By doing that, you might prevent it happening in the future. And learn and adapt, very important. So learn from your mistakes. Simple mantra. The other thing is really just take it on the chin. You can't do anything about it once it's happened. Yeah, you, talk, you mentioned uh, time hop earlier on. Yeah. That was quite bad for them, but their response. Fantastic. One of the best. Yeah. 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 So I just want to add as well, um, companies need to realize that they're often judged more on how they react to a breach than the breach itself. Take Equifax. Everyone knows about Equifax. Equifax has been in the news constantly. Discuss. Hardly ever hear a mention. Yeah. Why? Because they did it right. Yeah. Great. Completely agree. <clears throat> you do all those things, you'll feel better, and your users will feel better too. Yep. They know you made a mess, but it's how you don't. We're human. <clears throat> we are human. Okay. Anybody in this room sell something that's security related? Yeah. Oh. Not yet. <clears throat> a couple of people. So, yeah, just beware. When you go to a conference that isn't a B-sides conference, you're likely to find a lot of people that want to sell you something. And the bigger the conference, the more people there are that want to sell you something. And for set, you're up to the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of them are incredibly expensive. It costs five quid to come to this one. Five quid. But you want to go somewhere like Defcon, it's $1,500, and then you've got everything else you've got to pay for. And you even, black no, yeah. 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 Even AppSec EU, that was about a thousand quid. And then yeah. you've got your travel expenses, etc. So watch out for that. Um, keep it real. If you want to be a part of the community, I believe, then you need to come to this kind of thing. All the time. Watch out for crap coming in through your email or calls. I've completely silenced my phone at work, so it rings all the time, but I just ignore it. I don't hear it. And everyone's got a solution. And it's interesting, this, because they all come at you with a problem you haven't thought of yet or a solution to a problem you haven't got. Yeah, well, I think we'll do this. Well, you don't have a problem yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but you do. And all of a sudden, you're 100 grand a year out of pocket. Um, watch out for AI, machine learning, and the blockchain, and next gen. They're all very popular buzzwords that are attached to a price, or have a price attached to them. Um, it's become a little bit of a religion, I think. I mean, it's known as snake oil. It's called that for a reason, because it's more often than not, it might just be bollocks. <coughs> and beware of FUD. <coughs> a news article will quickly accelerate into a product. Okay, and then you're the, the person at the end of that process. So this is just a little thing about uh, people <coughs> in the industry. So you're all here because you want to hear about technology, you want to understand hacking, and they want to meet the band. Know your subjects, that's really important. You know, people will respect you and, and if you're authoritative on the thing that you're talking yeah. about. Quite important. And respect that others know their stuff. 
see a lot of that, a lot of argument on Twitter. Just don't get involved. If you haven't got anything constructive to add or uh, or say, just keep your mouth shut. It's a great policy. Engage and share. So that's everything from just, I don't know, sharing an article you found that might, somebody else might not have read. That next person it might be really valuable to and you change somebody's life. Time up there. And don't be a dick. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to elaborate on that. I think everybody understands. Uh, be more like the Bruce Dickinson. That's uh, Christopher Gordon <coughs> there, in case you haven't noticed. This is more cowbell. So, we're the beer farmers. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, we've just got time for an encore. <coughs> so, we've done one. <laughs> so, we thought 2018 was an eventful year in information security. 2019 shaping up pretty well. But we thought yeah. we'd have a retrospective awards. Everyone gets a free copy of the OSP <coughs> exam. Controversial. <laughs> 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 Too soon, dude. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. Anybody heard of Simon Smith? (laughs) Simon Smith is an Australian InfoSec expert. uh, (laughs) Except when you question him and he tends to get involved in legal action against you. Uh, I'm reasonably confident he can't reach you from Australia, so that's why he's included. Well, upside down. Absolutely. (laughs) Most cultivated hairdo. (laughs) It's got to be Scott Helm, right? Um, He's stuck with that picture because I think it's the best thing he can. Yeah. He's not going to get his hair in there. Best thing he does is play. Yeah. of the year. <laughs> Currently a fugitive and self-admits that he has not paid taxes in seven years. Yeah. And he's like surprised <laughs> that the government is going to be after him. So my feeling is as soon as they um, get the government of the United States back in action, put some fuel into a Coast Guard cutter, it's going to be, it's going to be the white Bronco moment of our generation yeah. here. Agreed. They're going to chase a boat. Cloins is, is in there. Does anybody remember the tweet where he was clearly <laughs> unwell? <laughs> <He's done his laughs> and he, oh, from, he couldn't spell coins, he spelled it coins. Pointless tap, Bitfire crypto wallet, anybody <laughs> disagree with that? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> buy them on the pair at Blackpool. Uh, the most righteous mission uh, is, we've got that written down where it stands for, but it's the group of security researchers um, that it also include Andrew Tierney, yep. etc., oh, that went at Bitfly with some serious venom and yeah. tore it to pieces, okay, in a really, really fun way, it's fair to say, uh, which upset the organization and <laughs> upset John. Uh, but who cares? He invited Andrew to his house, though, with a shop. He did. Yes. <laughs> so the InfoSec rock star is Ted Demopoulos. I don't know if anybody knows who that guy is, but he sells a book called InfoSec Rockstar. Um, when being geek will only take it so far. He sells his book via his website over HTTP. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers in their ears, who's heard of that guy? <coughs> so Dave Weiner is a respected security guy on the web. He's got a lot of followers on Twitter and he doesn't believe in HTTPS. He decries an encrypted web, he claims it's a conspiracy between Google mm-hmm. and Mozilla to own all the things. There was like an epic thread in Troy's blog on this guy that yeah. was just, did anyone read it? You're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so we take your data seriously. <laughs> what do I do? Uh, yeah. It's absolutely accurate. And of course, it came out with truth. Okay. Uh, we've had a minor spillage, though, so <laughs> uh, uh, only 383 million now, so it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been <laughs> And last but not least, the Golden Cowbell, which is a positive award, goes to Troy Hunt. <clears throat> now, like him or loathe him, and there's people in both camps, Troy, for me personally, as an individual, has done more to further the cause of information security, business and individual, than any other one person, I, I think. Okay, And for that, he deserves a lot of credit and that's why he wins he gets the golden cow gold 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 <laughs> which we're spray painting but you're all in it for next year you could possibly win it next year you never know this year even <coughs> and that's it we're finished so thank you very much thank you